we have a fraction where numerator is this sum for some value of a and denominator is this whole multiplied by this plus this plus this and so on till this term. Now the question is to find the value of this a when if we take the limit as n goes to infinity, the whole fraction becomes 1 by 60. It is also given that a is a real number and it is not equal to minus 1. I know that you might be tempted to treat this problem like another limit problem and try tricks like algebraic rearrangement or maybe low p tal rule to solve it. But hey, this is not really a pure limit question. You will be surprised to know that it is instead a definite integral problem hiding inside a limit. Yes, you heard it right. The clever idea here is to recognize that this expression is a limit as a sum, or Riemann sum, which means we will have to replace the sum by a definite integral. To see what a limit as a sum means, imagine the simple curve x square on the interval from 0 to 1 and assume you want the area under it. We all know that we can do the same using a definite integral from 0 to 1 of x squared times dx. But now, cut the interval into n equal thin strips like this, so each strip has width 1 divided by n. Then pick the right edge of the first strip, second strip, and so on. Here, x is 1 by n. Here it is 2 by n. Then here it is 3 by n, and so on. So at some k the edge, this distance from the origin will be k over n, which means x equals k over n, and thus this y value will be equal to x square or k, divided by n whole square. Now the area of this k rectangle is its height, times its width, so this rectangle area is k, divided by n whole square, multiplied by 1 divided by n. Then add up all these little rectangle areas from k equals 1 to n, and you get a sum that approximates the area under the parabola. Now, as you let n grow bigger and bigger, almost infinite, the rectangles get thinner, and the sum approaches the exact area, right? So we can apply the limit n tends to infinity here, and then we have the sum of k divided by n whole square multiplied by 1 divided by n. This is the whole idea of Riemann sums and is what we mean by limit as a sum. What can we see here? If we replace this k over n as x, then this small value of 1 over n as variable dx and this sum as integral. So we will finally get this definite integral. Now, if this is clear, coming back to our question, can you think of how we can turn this limit into a definite integral? Let us see how. First consider this numerator. Multiply and divide it by n raised to the power a to rewrite this as n raised to the power a times this will become 1 by n raised to a plus 2 by n raised to a and so on till n by n raised to a. Now consider this term. We can take n as common to get this as n times 1 plus 1 over n, whole raised to a minus 1. So we can rewrite this as n raised to a minus 1 times this raised to a minus 1. Now consider this part of the denominator. Multiply and divide by n on both sides to get this. So we get this as n times this will be a plus 1 over n then this will be a plus 2 over n, and so on till a plus n over n, right? This whole thing is equal to 1 over 60. Wow, look at them. This n power a minus 1 times n will be the same as n power a, and thus it will be canceled from the n power a in the numerator, and we are left with this. Now we can rewrite this sum in the numerator as summation of k over n, whole raised to a, where k goes from 1 to n divided by. Now write this part of the denominator as it is. Here also we will apply summation. We get sum of a plus some k over n, where k goes from 1 to n. Now, in order to convert this into definite integral, what do we need? Yes, right. We just need 1 by n term. So multiply and divide by 1 by n to get this. 
and add the limit here. Now here comes the magic. Substitute k by n as x, then 1 by n as dx, and limit n tends to infinity summation sign from k equals 1 to n as integral 0 to 1. This numerator will become integral 0 to 1 of x raised to a times dx. Now for this part of the denominator, if we put n as infinity, what will we get here? Yes, right, we will get 1 raised to a minus 1, which is simply 1. And this part of the denominator will be simply integral 0 to 1 of a plus x times dx. And this equals 1 over 60. Oh my god, that was amazing. Integral of this is x raised to a plus 1 over a plus 1, and for x equals 0 to 1, this value will be simply 1 over a plus 1. Then this integral will be ax plus x, squared over 2 from 0 to 1, which simply gives us a plus half. So we get a plus half times a plus 1 equals 60 or 2. a plus 1 times a plus 1 equals 120. On expanding, we get this quadratic equation, and thus the solution is a equals 7 or minus 17 by 2. And that's it. Let me know in the comments if you got cooked or you managed to escape. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.